tire that's flying, but the previous raccoon isn't fully restored. You're gonna have to go back and unlock all the faults to find the pages you're missing. There is some good news, though. A friend of mine in Japan just sent me this really cool movie. And guess what? It's all about us! Hey everybody, it's Texas Master X. I'm back here for the, to open the last vault of the game and finally get this over with. Ah. I'm pretty much almost done with the game, but I'm still going to keep going after I get 100% just to show a few things. For one, I finally managed to do that sequence break I was talking about where you get the spotlight in those earlier, but I'll show that later. Now let's just focus on this. Lovely. It better be. So yeah, 99% of the game. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. We'll stun all the guards in the world for a few seconds. Yeah. So basically, this is awesome. And now, it's At long a last, the previous Raccoonus restored to its original state. The first time I held the whole thing under my arm since I was eight years old. The same weight that all my ancestors had felt beneath their arms as they had passed it on. Although, while other family members may have been great thieves, they all inherited the book. I got a chance to earn it. I had taken down the fiendish five, having used the moves my ancestors taught me, and become a master thief along the way. The time had come for me to chronicle my own adventures into the great book. This is gonna be fun. to watch the credits again. I already you watched it. it. The previous Raccoonus is complete! Now, try beating all the Master Thief sprints to unlock the Desire's commentary. Once you've unlocked them all, I've got a special behind-the-scenes movie to show you. Oh, okay. So they have, like, a last behind-the-scenes movie after the... You beat all... Oh. Yeah, I just have one of these to go now. The way I've done it. Cause I've done need along the way, so now it's just time to do that. Duel by the dragon. Oh boy, this is gonna be fun. I'm gonna try to skip the cutscene at the beginning, as I don't think it makes you watch it, even if you don't. 
I know that you can do that. It shouldn't be that hard, but I've had trouble doing it. Oh, pfft. There we go. I might have not have made me watch it anyway, but... So I typically didn't even do anything. But yeah. Oh, pfft. You just kind of have to be... Very... Once speedrunning a level like this, you just kind of have to be... On your feet. Like, you have to know what to do and stuff. Because if you don't, you're going to fail. This isn't the hardest speedrun, though, so I should be able to manage it. Stop falling off! Stop falling, stop falling, I don't want it to get back up again. Uh, okay. I, that's not what I wanted to do, I wanted to use the roll. But okay, that helped. Although it did use of time. I have no time for that silly move. Hey, dude. Yeah, I was in the right place for the sequence break it earlier, which I just passed. I just wasn't doing it right. You're supposed to jump off this one specific little rock. Oh, pfft. Okay, just shoot down the things. Alright, let's keep... I'm just gonna... Yeah. I don't know what I was about to say there. But I don't really have anything to say, so I might as well just not. Almost there. Amazing I'm doing this well while commentary, because I haven't screwed up at all except for that one part at the beginning where I fell like 30 times. Alright. Ah, that almost hit me. Be careful, you might actually hit me. Yeah, it was actually hard. I was trying to get her to hit me on purpose. And that was actually hard to do. Alright, hopefully I can do this. No, no, stop it. Alright, go, 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 Fascinating. How should I describe Sly Cooper? He's charismatic, suave, debonair, cool, slick, fast, stealthy, athletic, just daredevil. Sly Cooper is charming thievery. We started with the idea that we action game where the what the why did it stop okay hold on Charismatic, suave, debonair, cool, slick, fast, stealthy, athletic, just daredevil. Sly Cooper is charming thievery. We started with the idea that we wanted to do an action game where the, the primary character was a thief. The choice of a raccoon was a pretty natural fit in terms of 
you know, obviously the, the mask being in place, um, being, uh, as Deb would say, a creature of the night. We very early on wanted to make a game that looked and felt like a cartoon, but was st one step closer to realism rather than flattened graphic. We started experimenting with different ways we could bring this character to life, uh, cell shading, how to make it feel like a cartoon but still feel like a great 3D game. We wanted it to actually look like it was inked and painted. And we want the backgrounds to be, you know, really lush and have a painted, a painted look. So it looks like it's a, a living animated episode that you've been thrown into. When you look at the game initially, the first thing that draws you in is the beautiful art style and the lush, very, very lush uh, look of the environments. But when you actually play the game, the gameplay itself is lush as well. of uh, the Sly character uh, was a much more realistic raccoon, chubby and not quite as lithe as the character is now, and it kind of evolved as we went along. Once we got to that part where he kind of evolved into what he is now, um, my main job was to take him and try to put every bit of thiefiness into him that I could. He was kind of tiptoeing, and he's really like rearing back to like ease his foot forward, trying to keep all his weight back, so his foot falls softly on the ground, and really try to, to hone his personality through subtleties in the movement, and really try to push the thiefiness. As we wanted Sly to feel really agile, we wanted him to feel like Sly could do uh, the most amazing physical feats. You want to let the player of the game feel like they're a thief. Not like a real thief. Like you wish thieves were. Sly Cooper's story is really cool. He comes from a long line of super raccoon thieves. And the source of their kind of thieving greatness is this book called The Thievius Raccoonus. It's this incredibly valuable heirloom that is stolen from Sly's family when he's very young. He has come of age and now he feels it's his noble duty to take back the Thievius Raccoonus. Sly has two buddies, Bentley and Murray. Bentley provides a lot of the plans for their missions. He does a lot of things that are very important for Sly to complete his missions. Murray has a huge case of, of Sly envy. He wants to be Sly in the worst possible way, and he has absolutely none of the capabilities to do it. A hero is only as good as his villains. We wanted to create villains, you know, making them dangerous, making them menacing, making them goofy, just giving them as much personality as, as Sly Cooper. It's a super high bar um, being in the action adventure category. I mean, all of the greatest games, the best games that are out there are all action adventures. The genre is such that you have to really excel in every single phase of the game. Going from saying Sly should be sneaky to actually having him feel sneaky in the game is hard. You have to start and you have to get the animation right, then you have to figure out how the engine's going to play the animation and how it gets affected by where he is and what he's doing and how the player can feel in control at the same time. People are doing shoot 'em ups and, and things with, you know, big weapons and things like that. And this had this is all about character. So you can like, get the feeling of uh, you know, I am sly and I'm I'm sneaking around. Anytime we can exploit anything in the environment, build it in a way that, you know, as sly is running over, it might seem more stealthy. We completely exploit that. And our golden rule is whatever is thiefier wins. If you want to make a game that looks different, the PS2 gives you the opportunity to do that. As a programmer, it has a ton of tools for doing, for solving all sorts of different types of technical problems. A big focus for us um, has been in getting our tool set to the point where the artists were really unconstrained. Artists will come to us with, they want the game to look this way, or what well, can we have a line around all the characters, um, the cell shading that we do, or how can we do the lighting models so that things that are bright have certain colors on them. And they have a, a lot of really cool ideas, and uh, I and the other people on the programming team work on trying to get the technology put in place so that um, so that we can you know, make those ideas happen. What we were able to do was put together our own lighting algorithm in the vector units and then do the same thing for the cell borders that we put around all our characters. We could get it to all run super fast and have it all look different than other games. That was really our goal from the start was to have a game which looked different. 
it's been an interesting process building a team to build a game like this. It's been great working with such a dedicated group of people. I've never really ever worked with a group I think is as hardcore as this. It really does require unbelievably talented artists, unbelievably talented programmers, and unbelievably talented designers. How you doing? The designers, I think, have done a wonderful job of giving players the experience of sneaking and being a thief and at the same time making the designs accessible to people so that you don't need to be a super gamer in order to play it, although there are tons of things that are in the game for those people. We're making a game that anyone can play. You can't just have great art, you can't just have great code, you can't just have great characters, you gotta have it all. It's not about just how the game looks, it's about how the game plays and how, how the player experiences it. And it's all about having fun. You can make a really cool character, but if he's not fun to play, it's not worth doing. Sly is cool, he's collected, he's adventurous. Sly is Sly. It is not a misnomer. So yeah, that was the uh, behind the scenes thing that you get from reading all of that. Sorry if the um, people's honking was kind of quiet. It's like kind of quieter than the rest of how in the game. But there, you also unlock another movie called Commercials and Outtakes. Let's see what this is. Sly Cooper, he's one cunning, devious, devious raccoonus. Make it be for everyone. Sly Cooper, he's one cunning, devious, devious raccoonus, ready to be for everyone. Why not a couple of pictures and then go home? Anybody you recognize here? No. Uh, I don't hang out with animals, man. I don't want to Which see. one is he? Does this ring a bell? Which uh, one? You sitting here playing for me, wasting my time. Sly Cooper, he's one cunning, devious, devious raccoonus, ready to be for everyone. Welcome to the commercial outtakes for Sly Cooper. He's one cunning, devious, devious raccoonus. He's also one pretty bad actor. Okay, camera's rolling and action. Okay, no. No. Can we uh, give him to stop licking? Oh, where's he going? Where's he going? I right, can. Can he look at the camera? Not at you. Right, what is he reaching for? The start. What is that? All right. He he he's chewing an egg or. A, is he gonna hurt her? Come back here. Oh, is he a fleas? Oh, that, that's that's crazy. I move the stick. Okay, he's not supposed to eat the peanuts. Can someone get another raccoon in? Oh, this is bad. Okay, smoke. Okay, less smoke. <laughs> All right, smoke. All right, who's doing the smoke? We've got way too much smoke. Oops. Hello, bandit. Okay, this is good, good, good. Wait, wait, bandit, bandit, where are you going, bandit? Hey, I know.
Show that cat. Which cat? Which cat? Where? Show that me cat. Where? Where's the cat? Where? Where's the cat? Where? Where's the cat? Show me the cat. The cat. I don't see no damn cat. Show me the cat. Something here. You're gonna give me something. I don't know any of these animals, man. I don't hang out with animals, man. I don't want to Gosh, that was some of those were really funny. I had to hold my laughter back in some of that part. Now test to do the last director commentary. And then I'll go back and discuss strategies for like Master C sprints and redo the ones I sequence broke. So yeah. For now. I kinda use the the fireworks in this level as kind of gating mechanisms to keep you kind of dodging and, and running from from Carmelita while you're while you're playing. Right. And also just to have bigger uh, kind of these big events during the game. Just from texture and I know like on the mug in the mugshot where she's shooting at you, the colors were reversed of this. Like in this one. Uh, Sly Cooper's path is all cool, and more Carmelita's jumping around is where we kept the warm colors. Mm -hmm. But in the mugshot one, it's kind of reversed, where Sly's running on the warm path, and she's jumping on the cool mm -hmm. buildings. Yeah, doing, doing her effect was kind of fun. She, she originally had a different, um, entirely different weapon, and uh, we really wanted to kind of emphasize the stun gun. Feel. And, and uh, it was interesting to try and tune because the, the color tones of the world in general were, um, you know, she, she appears in several places and so it was finding something that had a little bit of, you know, uh, this, it has this icy color but also this sort of orange center to it and that seemed to work best across the different levels. So was it your idea always to have, a, do you have other ideas besides that dragon? Or was it? After I changed from the voodoo one, it was it was I think that was the one that mentioned uh, trying to trying to see if we could do a dragon for it, and then it, which was good because you know for a Chinese dragon it's you have that great that great shape that you could fold you could you know I can I was able to fold it and shape it how I needed it for where she's gonna stand on and, and stuff like that. And then you put, you put in all the, all the legs, all the legs and everything like that. Yeah, so they're, you know, we're trying to think of places on the dragon, you know, on the high and low points of the, the hubs of the dragon, and then also the, you know, there are these kind of freestanding poles and the abyss of the, you know, the, the mist that you can see down there. Just having her stand in as many different places as possible. Made her feel really like she was sort of part of the world, but always just out of reach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a big thing. You have to keep her on screen. Right. You keep her large enough to, to see her, and at the same time, make it seem like you can never get to her. Right. So, so the you closest have to leap off the path to your death or something yeah. like that. One of the first drafts I did of it had a giant, like, panda Buddha statue, like, laying on its side where she was jumping on. It just wasn't the same. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm glad we went with the golden dragon. Never got to see that one. <laughs> I tried to keep it away from it, so it wasn't very, it wasn't very good. Alright, that's it.